The thrill? I wonder what it would feel like. To kill. It's a deadly attack on innocence. And finding the person responsible. I was shocked. It was crazy. Will lead detectives into the heart of darkness. Walked her into the woods, telling her, I've got something really neat I want to show you. Obviously, the heartache is still as great, you can tell. It's about a week before Halloween, and the residents of St. Martin's, Missouri, are about to discover that not all monsters are make-believe. Have you ever seen anything like this? I never have, and I hope never to see another case like this. There was no way anyone could have known. It's a typical Wednesday night at home for Patty Price and her three kids, Anthony, Stephanie, and the youngest, nine-year-old Elizabeth Olton. Well, she was going to be in a play at school, so she was practicing her lines and doing her little songs and irritating her brother. And I was getting ready to cook dinner when... There's a knock at the door. It's a six-year-old girl who lives across the woods. She had asked if Elizabeth could go play. And originally, I told her no, because I was getting ready to make dinner. And the both girls hopping up and down, begging, wanting to go play. It's like, OK, you can go for an hour. But she had to be home by 6. It is late October, and the sun sets at 6.30. Patty knows her daughter Elizabeth will be back and on time for dinner because she's deathly afraid of the dark. In the deep and dense woods that separate their homes, turn into a scary place once night falls. Now, Elizabeth was not a type of girl who would walk in the woods by herself. But when 6 o'clock rolls around... She didn't make it home. Immediately, Patty calls up to her neighbor's home. And that's when she gets some startling news. They told me she wasn't there. I just knew it wasn't right. They left together, and the grandmother was telling me she was never there. Never there? That's when I called the police. The Cole County Sheriff's Department is on scene in just 15 minutes. Sheriff deputies and Patty head over to the last known place Elizabeth was going, her neighbor's house. Everybody up there said she wasn't there. Uh, so then they started doing a search. They called in like the fire department and uh, local officers. And by 10 o'clock, there was probably hundreds of people looking for her. Teams of concerned residents and local law enforcement agencies form a grid search around Patty's home and her neighbor's house. They had several groups of people. They had a command post set up up the road. But Wednesday night is slipping away and still no sign of Elizabeth. Because they were kept telling me there was no signs of foul play. It's like she didn't just vanish, she's nine years old. Patty knows Elizabeth has her cell phone with her and she's been calling it nonstop since her daughter disappeared. And go to voicemail. Then investigators contact the cell phone company and order what is called an emergency ping, basically signals generated from the phone to the nearest cell tower. The data is collected and used to zero in on the precise location of a cell phone. And in no time, sheriff deputies start receiving pings from Elizabeth's cell phone. One, two, then moments later, a third and final ping from the missing nine-year-old's phone before it appears to go dead. And its location? The pings from the phone all were located in the general area of the woods. It was a large wooded area behind the house, but it's, it's thick forest ground and it was a lot of area to cover. They're going to need backup. It was the following day in which my unit, my investigative unit became involved and was contacted to assist in the search. I believed she was still in the area. Still, he had to consider the other horrifying possibilities. She had been grabbed perhaps by a kidnapper or a child molester. Um, so we were also pursuing the, the possibility that maybe somebody grabbed her and put her in a car. A missing persons report is sent out to neighboring law enforcement agencies and the FBI. At that point during the investigation, the FBI was involved, Cole County Sheriff's Department was involved, the Missouri State Patrol was involved, 
There were somewhere in the neighborhood of about 300 volunteers from the community that came together. And when you consider that there are only 1,100 people in St. Martin's, Missouri, the number of people searching for Elizabeth is massive. It's a third of the town. What was it like to see hundreds of people searching for your sister? Crazy, like unbelievable. Like that many people would come to look for somebody. We had checkpoints set up all around the area for everyone driving into and out of the area. Uh, we tracked down all the local registered sex offenders. We, we had planes in the air, helicopters, dog teams, dive teams for the ponds and rivers. Everything that we could do at that time, we were trying to locate her. But now it is Thursday afternoon and almost 24 hours since anyone has seen nine-year-old Elizabeth Olten. Sergeant Rice turns his attention back to the last person to see Elizabeth, the six-year-old little girl and neighbor who knocked on the door to see if she could play. Her name is Emma and she lives just a few houses down from Elizabeth. What was Emma like? She was a little bit younger. Uh, they played dolls, just normal little girl stuff. They'd run around and play outside. And what could this child just out of kindergarten possibly know about Elizabeth's disappearance? Emma was interviewed by the FBI and Emma simply stated that she was playing with her friend Elizabeth and about an hour later Elizabeth started walking home and that was the last she saw of her. Or was it? Coming up. She kept that pretty secret. Does Elizabeth, six-year-old neighbor, know more than she's saying? Don't tell anyone. Or is there someone else entirely? We just met our suspect. 